Good evening, and welcome to My Little Fortress of Solitude, the uh, the little slice of heaven that is my flat. Now, I would, at this point, usually walk you around and do a good panning view of what uh, what I'm seeing, as I have in other videos. I can't really do that at the moment, because I am a messy boy, and I've procrastinated for weeks, and I've put off doing a deep clean of this room, and as a direct result... I now, I now I'm left with no choice but to do a deep clean. Uh, it looks like the aftermath of some form of natural disaster in here. So once that's dealt with, I will maybe do like an MTV crib style welcome to my house vlog episode type thing, which will be lots of fun. So I look forward to that. Uh, but for now, I have just been uh, going through boxes of old rubbish that I've hoarded over the years, getting rid of what I can, hanging on to what I want to. And... The lovely thing about going through old stuff is that you stumble across things that uh, you forgot you even knew existed. And uh, and just kind of, it's a nice little wave of nostalgia when you do that. And I've uh, I've been going through a few drawers uh, that I've just kind of stuffed in. I've used as kind of like a, like a catch-all for the crap that I've gathered over the years. And I found a drawer full of loads of old music stuff, which was really lovely. And so I'll, I'll just show you a few bits that I've actually uh, dug out of deep storage and... Uh, Hopefully you'll be able to wax nostalgic like me. Uh, some of these might seem like artifacts if you're uh, under the age of uh, 25, but uh, you know, because now we live in the era of digital music. Speaking of digital music, I found my old iPod Nano, which I used to go running with. Uh, this thing got me through the Plymouth Half Marathon, uh, a 10k here or there as well. So it's going to be interesting to open that up later on and see what's uh, what's still on there, provided it still works and I can. Uh, find the appropriate cable to charge it but yeah so kind of going further back in time now for uh, for music storage CDs uh, this is probably my favorite CD of all time I've owned several copies of it it is of course Owl City Ocean Eyes and it's actually playing in the background because uh, I didn't realize this but my PlayStation 3 has the capacity to play music which is lovely and is helping me uh, Remain motivated to clean. Let's see what else we got here. We've got uh, Paramore Riot, cracking album. A little EP from a Canadian artist called Light Poindexter, which is lovely. It's an acoustic uh, EP. As you can see, it's lovely and designed on both sides, which is cool. I shouldn't be admitting to owning this or loving this, but uh, if you know what that is, Fair enough. I'm not actually going to say it on camera, but I love me some Tay Tay. Making it a bit more angsty and teenagey now. We've got the old uh, Green Day American Idiot album. This is again another one of the albums that I have bought more than one copy of in my lifetime because when I was an angsty and moody teenager, I played it to absolute death and uh, thrashed the CD to the point that it uh, required replacing not once but twice. So there you go. A um, couple of others. We've got a couple of compilation albums, Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen, two of my uh, my all-time favourites there as well. So looking forward to putting the Bon Jovi on in a bit and doing some hoovering and some cleaning and moving some boxes about. And I thought that was kind of the extent of what I have. And then I found a box that I, uh, I've had with me since I left home when I was, uh, when I was 16, 17. So we're going back to 2000, uh, 2006, 2007. And it's an old box of cassette tapes. I've got the old uh, U2, I think this is, yeah, the Unforgettable Fire cassette tape, which is, again, U2 are basically musical marmite, but if you like them, and I do, uh, probably my favourite. This is, uh, this is fantastic. This is Bruce Springsteen, Darkness on the Edge of Town. And uh, this, I believe, predates me. I'm just going to quickly see if there is a... A copyright date. Bear with me for a moment. I'll pop you down there. And yes, 1976. 1976. And young people, this is what a tape looks like. And uh, you, you know, it's all well and good us all having this digital stuff now, and it's wonderful that uh, we can have all of our favourite music with us wherever we go on Spotify or or iTunes or what have you. But I don't think anybody uh, who didn't live through the joy of this can remember the just the satisfaction of 
when you tape snap fixing it, you kind of like you'd sell a tape the uh, the two bits of tape together, and then you stick your finger into the cassette itself and wind it up, and it would never play the same way again. You'd be listening to something, you'd just be like you know, you know baby come back come back and come back come back, and it would just it would just ruin it forever. But years later, you'll be listening to it on digital or on CD, and you'll be like. Where's the blue bit? What's that all about? Which is, uh, it's wonderful. And, uh, oh blimey, we've even got some Neil Young as well. Look at that. Uh, Neil Young tape. Fantastic. I wish I had uh, some of my dad's old LPs because I'm sure that, uh, well, quite a few of them I'd like to have just for nostalgia, but other of them I would like to sell on eBay for the sheer value that they would probably uh, garner these days. So, yeah, it's just just nice having uh, having the old CDs playing and uh, hopefully it will motivate me to make this place presentable enough to show you all at a later date. Which reminds me, uh, on the last vlog I uh, mentioned that I was looking at doing some kind of a fitness walk. So uh, just to close out tonight I will, uh, I'll explain a little bit more about what I've got planned for that. So I've been kind of pushing the distances that I've been walking further and further each time. I'm up to about 15 kilometres at the moment. And what I'm going to do at some point in the next week, or maybe the next two weeks, I'm not sure what the weather's going to do, and I want to I wanna choose a good day for this. But I'm going to basically make a list of different landmarks in Plymouth, different places that people will know, uh, and I'm going to do what I'm going to affectionately dub the Tour de Plymouth. I am going to spend the entire day walking, or as long as my legs can take it before I have to retreat home and uh, elevate them and put put frozen vegetables or something on them in a, in a bag not like raw frozen vegetables because that would be weird and also a waste of good veg so the plan will be i will set out with my uh, my lunch and uh, a rucksack full of water and stuff and uh, i'll go through the various landmarks of plymouth and i'll do a little snippet like a little clip at each of these landmarks because now that i've figured out how to edit videos properly or at least a bit more properly than i have been in uh, kind of one take and one shot I'm going to try and compile uh, my little walk and hopefully the end result will be I will have spent a good day walking maybe 15, 20 clicks. I will have little clips of each of these famous Plymouth Plymouthian landmarks. Stuff like Smeaton's Tower, uh, bits like uh, we're going to go up to the Life Centre, go up to Argyle maybe, and so on and so forth. And um, yeah. So it'll be nice for the people who aren't able to get out and about to kind of see some of these places they maybe miss seeing. And of course for some of my friends who don't live in Plymouth, you will get to see the city that I have spent pretty much my entire life in and growing up in. So hopefully that will be lots of fun, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now I have uh, procrastinated too long, I am still sat on my backside talking, so it's time for action. I will see you all soon. Bye bye! Hello there! It is uh, Thursday afternoon and uh, it's grim and grey outside so today's vlog is from the comfort of my sofa and my lovely clean flat which uh, I will show you all in a, in a later video. But for now, um, firstly apologies that I've not uploaded in a few days, it's been very very busy. I've had different meetings with different people over Zoom and, uh, and over house party. We actually had a quiz last night as well which my friend Beth put together which was amazing, uh, amazing fun. And uh, I, I might have even won it. Not at all smug. Definitely didn't gloat. Definitely didn't have my uh, deal with it shades prepared for when I won. Definitely didn't wear them and just sit there smugly smiling to myself while I watched other people look at me in disdain. So it was lots of fun. And uh, there's... Uh, there's been a lot of that going on around the last few days. It's been very busy. Been really, really lovely. Um, yeah, life is good. Life is great. Um, so today, though, is a bit more of a me day. I've uh, obviously, when the weather's as grim as it is at the moment, there's not really much to do outdoors. So I decided that I'd take a little time to uh, to curl up on the sofa with uh, a nice cup of tea and a good book. And uh, when I say a good book, I'm just going to pull you a little closer. You can see I've been reading through the Lord of the Rings, uh, the Two Towers which is hands down my favourite book series. Um, and, you know, it's up there amongst my favourite film series as well. I, it's one of the few occasions where the film adds to the book rather than detracting from it. 
like a lot of people when they watch the Harry Potter films will immediately go oh where's so and so and why didn't this happen and be very disappointed and angry with the adaptions but uh, yeah I think the Lord of the Rings ones they did pretty darn well I'm very excited that they're doing an, uh, an Amazon Prime series as well soon so yeah uh, but being the big nerd that I am I love I love the Lord of the Rings it was actually my first uh, my first step into the world of fiction and uh, fantasy and uh, different worlds and all the rest of it um, and I even have like a few little bits of memorabilia around the flat I've got my uh, lovely Samwise Gamgee glow in the dark pop vinyl which is really cool the uh, the little light in his hand actually does glow blue in the in the dark which is pretty cool as does the sword like it does in the books which is nice and of course the one ring I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not but it is actually engraved on both the inside and the outside which is also very cool again much like the uh, the film and the book so you know yeah love the Lord of the Rings I actually have a favorite um favorite scene if you like from both the book and the film uh it's slightly different in both but uh, it comes from the second book and the second film uh the two towers you if you're probably more familiar with the film so it's the bit where sam and frodo have just been released from captivity by faramir and they're about to continue on their journey with Gollum, uh heading towards uh, the Darklands, heading towards mordor and uh, shelob's lair and all the rest of it and there's just this beautiful scene where um, Frodo's kind of having a bit of a crisis. They're, they're tired, they're hungry, their supplies are running low, uh, and they're demoralised. And, and Frodo has this little kind of crisis, and uh, him and Sam have a conversation. And uh, what I'll do is, in a minute, I'll actually uh, I'll read that for you, and uh, then share some of my thoughts on it afterwards. Um, but it is just a beautiful little piece of literature, and uh, I kind of tend to think of the lord of the rings as kind of like my comfort food book or my comfort food films if i've had a crappy day it's like you know when you've had a bad day at work some of you will go home and you'll have a and t or you'll have you know you'll dive like nose first into a big tub of ben and jerry's guilty love that love the fish food but um yeah for me the lord of the rings is that it's a kind of very familiar comforting thing to read when you're feeling a bit low and the world seems a bit miserable and the reason i've chosen the uh, the part or the uh, the passage of the book to read out today um is, is because of that it is a very uplifting uh, it won't initially seem like it but it feels like a very uplifting part of the book um and yeah i will uh, i'll read it to you now then and hopefully that's something that you will all enjoy so in a dark crevice between two great piers of rock they sat down frodo and sam a little way within and gollum crouched upon the ground near the opening there the hobbits took what they expected would be their last meal before they went down into the nameless land maybe even the last meal that they would ever eat together some of the food of gondor they ate and wafers of the waybread of the elves and they drank a little too but of their water they were sparing and they took only enough to moisten their dry mouths. I wonder when we'll find water again, said Sam. But I suppose even over there they drink. Orcs drink, don't they? Yes, they drink, said Frodo. But do not let us speak of that. Such drink is not for us. Then all the more need for us to fill our bottles now, said Sam. But there isn't any water up here. Not a sound or a trickle have I heard. And anyway, Farmer said we were not to drink any of the water in Morgul. No water flowing out of Imlad Morgul were his words, said Frodo. We are not in the valley now, and if we came out on, upon a, a spring, it would be flowing into it and not out of it. I wouldn't trust it, said Sam. Not until I was dying of thirst. There's a wicked feeling about this place, he sniffed. And a smell, I fancy. Do you notice it? A queer kind of smell. Stuffy. I don't like it. I don't like anything here at all, said Frodo. Step or stone, breath or bone, earth, air and water all seem accursed. But so our path is laid. Yes, that is so, said Sam. And we shouldn't be here at all, if we'd known more about it before we started. But I suppose it's often that way. 
The brave things in the old tales and songs, Mr Frodo. Adventures, as I used to call them. I used to think that they were the things that wonderful folk of these stories went out and looked for, because they wanted them. Because they were exciting and life was a bit dull. A kind of sport, you might say. But that's not the way of it with the tales that really mattered. Or the ones that stay in the mind. Folks seem to have just been landed in them, usually. Their paths were laid that way, as you put it. But I expect they had lots of chances, like us, of turning back. Only they didn't. And if they had, well, we shouldn't know, because they'd have been forgotten. We hear about those as they just went on. And not all to a good end, uh, not all to a good end, mind you. At least, not to what the folks inside of a story, and not the ones outside of it, would have called a good end. You know, coming home and finding things all right, though not quite the same. Like old Mr Bilbo. But those aren't always the best tales to hear, though they may be the best tales to get landed in. I do wonder what sort of tale we've fallen into. I wonder, said Frodo, but I don't know. And that's the way of a real tale. Take any one that you're fond of. You may know or guess what kind of tale it is, happy ending or sad ending, but, but the people inside of the tale don't know. And you don't want them to. So, it's a it's a very beautiful, a uh, very beautifully written piece of piece of prose that, um, and it kind of goes on in 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 the film. Um, this is kind of where they take a little poetic license from the book, where they talk about how you know, they just Sam says that they hold on to just one thing, and Frodo asks him, "What are we holding on to, Sam?" And Sam replies, "Hope." And he goes on to talk about how there will be light at the end of the tunnel, to paraphrase, that there will someday hopefully be a new dawn and a new light and uh, everything will be okay. And until they get there, they're holding on to each other. I think that's incredibly appropriate considering the um, the current state of affairs in the world at the moment. Not just, uh, not just the COVID-19 stuff as well. Uh, the, all, all the stuff going on in the States and around the world uh, regarding Black Lives Matter and just, you know, again, I'm not going to use this as a platform whatsoever to to, st to kind of politically influence or anything like that. That's not what this is about. Um, but I do think it's important that we all come together and we all try and work together for good. And, you know, that, that in a way, I guess, is me telling you what I think of it all. Um, but hopefully not in too a preachy way. But yeah, it's, you know, we're all in this situation together. We're all very aware of what's going on around us. And so the best thing that we can kind of keep doing, and this is what the the, the, uh, the book is, and the, the films and all the rest of it, they always encourage me to do, is just to come together with the people you love, the people around you, and try and make some happiness, try and make some positivity happen, you know? Even if it's something as dumb as doing an internet quiz with your friends and mocking your friends because they're vertically challenged like a hobbit, so, okay, Bethany doesn't watch these, so I think I'm safe. I'm not going to get punched in the arm for that one. Um, you know, and, and, and if they're your friends and you're not roasting them, what the hell, man? Like, that's, you know, kind of part and parcel of being a friend. But, yeah, it's, I think it's just so important for us all to try and support each other and have fun and try and make a change, make some positivity happen in the world. So I'll, uh, I'll kind of leave it there for today. Uh, the plans of the long 15... Uh, 15 mile walk with the Tour de Plymouth has kind of been scrapped for the time being just because of the weather. Once I get a nice sunny day, we will be doing that and that's going to be lots of fun. My, I can already feel my legs tensing and, and swearing at me under their breath, but uh, oh well, they'll get over it, I'm sure. And uh, it'll be lots and lots of fun to uh, to show you all around my, uh, my hometown. But until then, guys, uh, stay safe, keep loving each other, and uh, I will see you soon. Take care. Hello there, it's Sunday evening and uh, tomorrow is supposed to be a lovely bright, bright sunshiny day, so we're finally doing it. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've not seen the previous vids, then please allow me to explain. Tomorrow we are doing what I have affectionately dubbed the Tour de Plymouth, which has nothing to do with sweaty Frenchmen in bicycle shorts, 
it instead has everything to do with a sweaty Englishman in bicycle shorts and other shorts over the top because the whole world doesn't see my giblets. But it's going to be fun. There are no bikes involved. We are doing a, uh, a long walk. The idea is, basically, this is something I saw another guy do on YouTube, where he planned a little route through his hometown, hitting all of the kind of the major landmarks. He takes like a 10 to 15 second video clip at each of these landmarks, and then cobbles it all together in the editing room to make uh, a lovely little tour of his hometown. And uh, I've done the very same. I have planned a route, uh, starting from my front door and ending at my front door, doing a complete lap of, uh, of a lot of the major landmarks. Um, it's all in the aid of me trying to get into better shape. I want to be able to run the half marathon next year, as sadly uh, we couldn't do it this year because of COVID. So I'm going to try and push myself. The route I've planned, um, there are, there's technically two routes. There are two options that I can take. Option one starts at my front door, does a kind of a loop around town and through a few different places, and it finishes at Marsh Mills up towards the Sainsbury's. Um, I'm going to gauge at that point how my legs are holding up, bearing in mind I'm still doing 50 squats every day in uh, in the aid of raising awareness for mental health conditions and suicide prevention. So depending on whether or not my legs want to do any more, uh, we have two options. We can either peel off and go home at that point and have a much earned, well-earned rest and some, some food, or I can push it a little further and we can see if we can get to Plimbridge Woods and then turn around and go back. Um, so that's the that's the kind of the plan at the moment. As I say, I've got all of my uh, all of my kit laid out on the bed, ready to ready to go in the morning. I've got a couple of big liters of water chilling in the fridge because it's really important to stay hydrated, especially if it's going to be bright and sunny and lovely. And uh, we'll pick up some food on route as well, have a lunch, and uh, I'll probably do like a little halftime thing where I do a longer clip and uh, say how it's going and keep you guys informed. But yeah. It's going to be fun. Hopefully the weather's good and uh, hopefully my legs my legs like me afterwards as well because my, my brain's currently telling me this is a bad idea. You don't want to do this. I'm probably going to be waddling slash crawling home. Um, but you know what? It's good to push yourself and good to try and there's no harm in failing even if you do try. So yeah. Without further ado guys, I'm going to put the camera down and the next thing you'll probably see is me at my front door tomorrow after I've done my squats. So, see you tomorrow. Okay, everything's ready, bag is packed. Without further ado, allons-y. Okay, we are at our first stop, which is Mutley Plain, the place with lots and lots of shops, most of which are now closed. But, uh... There is, however, one place of interest that we always like to go to, and that is, of course, Good Bodies. Many a fond memory of uh, a Gutbuster special in here with uh, Eric Hater and a few of the other guys. So, on to the next stop. Okay, so uh, we're at Beacon Park Baptist Church now. Uh, we're in Peveril. This actually used to be Peveril Park Methodist Church back in the day. Uh, and the reason I'm showing you all this is because this is actually where I used to go to do Boys Brigade uh, back in the day. If you saw the last video, you'll, uh, you'll remember the story about the Boys Brigade camping trip on, uh, on the Isle of Wight. So yeah, and uh, here was where we used to queue up and wait to go in. Happy days. I'll just show you so this is uh, what I affectionately refer to as the training field the reason being this is where we would go to do PE when I was at school back when I was a wee one and uh, we would run laps of this field and uh, have sports days and all sorts so yeah good memories on to the next then okay so, uh, checkpoint number four on our magical mystery tour we're outside home park the, uh, the home ground of the recently promoted local Plymouth Argyle. Uh, not sure what else to say except Green Army! Okay, we're about to leave Central Park now. I'm just walking down towards the train station at the uni, but I uh, couldn't not stop and show you this beautiful view. You can see Beckett Point, you can see just so much of Plymouth, all the way down to the high, really. And then over to Lipson, St Jude's, all that, and back round to Peveril. 
crazy. So good, so good. Right, next stop. Plymouth train station, or rather the uh, the big flyover bridge by it. I'll show you there. Got the uh, train station just over there. British Transport Police. Follow me up onto the flyover. I know uh, if Dino's watching this, he'll appreciate a good bridge. There we go. The old train bridge that you go if you're heading into Cornwall or down to Saltash. Right, and on to the next. Okay, we've got uh, two for the price of one now. We're at Plymouth University. I've uh, got my back to this, which is the back end of the Roland Levinsky building. And uh, got other parts of the unit just there. You can see uh, one of the, uh, the, what we call the ice cubes just over there. And then for your bonus, uh, bonus little uh, stop on this whirlwind mystery tour, got what used to be the old library and uh, the museum, which has now been repurposed, redesigned. And uh, it looks really, really good from the other side as well. So yeah. And uh, about two minutes away, we've got Drake Circus Shopping Centre. One of the more interesting uh, pieces of Plymouth architecture. If you see that, that is Charles Cross Church, uh, which was bombed in the Second World War during the Blitz. A little bit of history lesson for you. So next up, we've got Barco, another very interesting piece of architecture and design. And then, the Sundial and Plymouth City Centre. Okay, so we're at a point where we're going to stop for some lunch now, and uh, if I'm giving you all a tour of my hometown, it would be wrong of me not to stop at the most Plymouthian place possible to grab some scran. So we're at Ivor Dooney's. Let's see what we can get. Alright guys, we've found a nice spot to sit down. We're just outside Plymouth Pavilions, as you can see here. I'll just uh, stay over there. So, nice area. We've got some uh, picnic uh, benches here. We've got the Duke of uh, Grand Duke Cornwall Hotel over there. And uh, my office up there, which uh, I'm very much looking forward to getting back to. But uh, as promised, we're going to stop for a bite to eat, and uh, I'm very excited about this. I've not had an Ivadini pasty since about the end, of Ju uh, the end of January, beginning of February, so hopefully uh, they haven't lost their touch. I'm still glad that these guys are, are still in business and they've not been taken down by COVID, but uh, let's, ha let's have a go, see how he is. Sunnies are out because the sun's out, so uh, it's going to be a scorcher. I might regret not having bought sun lotion, but we'll see. Right. Hmm. Oh, how good. Hmm. Not missed the beat. Right. According to my little um, my app, we've done just over four and a half miles, so we're not quite halfway there yet. As Bon Jovi saying, mm. so um, we're going to have this pasty, have a bit of the old, uh, bit of the old Fanta, and then we're going to head down towards the uh, the hoe and the barbican and see what we can see. See, see. In a second. Okay, we made it to the hoe. I've got the war memorial behind me for soldiers who died in the First and Second World Wars. And, uh, just a little crappy shot. I hope you can hear me. The wind's being a complete dog at the moment. I've got some nice flags there representing the different countries and all the rest of it. And a smack dab in the middle. That is Sweden's Tower Lighthouse. It's not the actual original lighthouse. That was somewhere else. If I knew more about my local history, I'd be able to tell you something interesting about it, but it's a nice lighthouse. And uh, because the sun's come out and it's beautiful, people are out and around. And uh, hopefully you can see the sea and it is beautiful and blue and very nice and sunny. So, on to the next location. The old bunny ears. How good. All right, we have made it to the, uh, the barbecue. being my stomach, but uh, it's a lovely view out here. Very good there. So yeah, let's uh, keep moving. Alright guys, we are at the Barbican Leisure Park. I've kind of taken you all on uh, my try and true and tested first date template, where usually uh, my, my kind of go-to is I'll arrange to meet uh, the person in question out of the sundial. We'll go out for coffee, a Costa is like a nice icebreaker, a nice how do you do. Walk around the barbecue like we've just done, and then cross over by the aquarium, and we'll probably end up here. 
and then uh, I usually will either suggest we watch a film and of course there's only one place you can go after you watch the film and that is Nando's and I cannot wait for the days where I can get back inside of a Nando's and have something spicy and something chickeny. So, on to the next. Okay, we're at the next checkpoint, which is another church. Uh, this time this is my home church, Plymouth Christian Centre. Just to uh, show you guys, just off the cat down roundabout. Going here for 10 years, love it. Got lots of good friends from here. I lots of good fellowship as well. So, now we're going to head down towards Lara Bridge and uh, start the, the hard work of our journey. This is the longer bit, so here goes. Okay, sit rep. We've just crossed the threshold for about seven and a half miles. We're on the, uh, the Lara Pedestrian Bridge. Our next destination is uh, Saltram and then eventually, hopefully you can see that, that's where we're heading. Legs are holding up okay. Uh, no chafing of which to speak of, which is nice. Phone battery is lasting as well. The only thing is probably a little bit of jip is my, is my quads from the squats. But yeah, so far so good. It's uh, around, what time? Let's have a look. Just edging towards three o'clock. So all being well, we might make it to Plimbridge after all, fingers crossed. Okay, so we've got a, a little ways to go before our next checkpoint, before our next destination. But uh, I like these vlogs to be fun and have a bit of stupidity and a bit of silliness in them as well. And so I thought I would share a story with all of you. Uh, this isn't one of my stories you'll be pleased to hear. This is actually a one that I'm borrowing from, uh, from David Beresford. I will, of course, uh, tag and credit him with the story in the, in the post for this. Uh, it's a story about one of his ministerial friends, a guy who owned uh, just a little bit of land out towards the, the White Cliffs of Dover. And he, this guy was also a minister, and he was approaching his, shall we say, his twilight years. He was approaching the end of his life, and uh, he was a very frugal man. He liked to give away everything he had. He was a very giving kind of fellow. Um, but he had this one prized possession, and uh, he decided one day that he would call his son up. And uh, he invites his son to come over to, uh, to the place that he's staying, to his, to his nice house out towards these cliffs, out towards Dover. And uh, he brings his son in and he says, son, I've lived a very full life. I've given what I can. Uh, but the one thing that I've always kept for myself is my prized racehorse. Uh, it's my one pride and joy, my one guilty pleasure. And as I approach the end of my days, I want to, uh, I want to hand it over to you. And uh, the son was, was kind of very taken aback by this and very, uh, very pleased at his father's charitable offer. And, uh, whew, stopping for a breather. So uh, he, uh, he he says, oh, th thanks, Dad. Can I, can I take it out for a test ride, you know? Can I get out and uh, and feel the feel the wind in my hair, jump on the horse? And the father says, well, yes, son, that's absolutely fine, but there's something you should know about my horse. Uh, I'm a very pious man. I'm a very holy man. And because I am, I like to think about God and everything I do. And so in instead of the usual commands that you would give a horse, you know when you get on a horse, you kind of, you click your heels and you say, giddy up. Well, son, with this horse, you don't say giddy up. You, in fact, just say, praise the Lord. And the son nods and takes that in. And then uh, the father says, and uh, now about stopping, again, you would think you would say, whoa, like you would with a normal horse, but uh, not this horse. You don't say, whoa. Uh, you instead say, amen. And so the son kind of nods and he, he goes with it. And... Uh, He's like, okay, I think I've got a dad. All right, off I go. So he jumps on the horse and he says, praise the Lord. And off the horse goes at uh, breakneck speed. So the son's been riding for a, for a kind of good half an hour. And he's, uh, he's thinking it's probably about time to turn around. And uh, as he's going on his way, he suddenly becomes aware that in the distance he can see lots of blue sea. And uh, as he looks further ahead, he can see the edge of the White Cliffs of Dover. So he realises, all right, probably best time to slow down. And so he says, whoa, to the horse. Nothing. Horse just keeps on galloping. And the son panics now because he realises that his dad gave him some instructions that he can't quite remember. And uh, he's getting closer and closer. 400 yards, 300 yards, still nothing. 200 yards, 100 yards. And just as he's at the precipice, he remembers. And he, he finally says, amen, amen. And the horse pulls up just on the edge of the cliff. And the sun goes, oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, 
That's definitely a Davy B joke. Right, let's continue on our way. Okay, we made it to Saltram, or at least to the beginning of Saltram. And I uh, found a nice little spot just down here by the rocks, by where the water usually is in the estuary. And uh, now's as good as time as any to kind of take a pause to, uh, to rehydrate. And then we'll continue over there into Saltram and uh, head towards the Great Stone Arches. Okay, we've made it to the Stone Archways in Saltram. I'll just let you guys have a little look. It used to be that you could actually go up there and have a closer look, but unfortunately due to some land subsidence, I don't think we're going to be able to get up there today. So, we're now at the uh, the point where we need to make a decision as to whether we try Plimbridge or not. Uh, it's currently, it's just gone 20 past 3. Now, I need to be at home just before 5 in order to go fishing with a friend tonight. So, what I'm thinking is this. We're going to put a pause on Plimbridge. We're going to do that another day because I've got another idea for that. We're going to do a nice walk all the way out to Clearbrook and back. Might even get some people along for that one as well. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, keep on going through Saltram, go up to uh, go up to Saltram House. We're going to then go to the Sainsbury's with the sales and work our way home, and that will uh, that will be that for the day. So next stop, Saltram House. Okay, and uh, Saltram House just behind us here. Right. Uh, so next stop we're gonna head towards Marsh Mills and uh, go from there Okay, we made it to Marsh Mills. We made it to uh, Sainsbury's with the sales Marsh Mills roundabout We've just gone over 10 miles now according to uh, my my little tracker device. So that's a good distance Feeling really positive about it uh, I'm not too bummed that we haven't gone to Plimbridge just because that's another adventure for another day I guess so uh, Next stop, home and a, a nice big cup of tea, I think. See you in a minute. Okay, and we're back. Uh, th uh, the, uh, the final outcome was that was 12.32 miles. So uh, feeling pretty, pretty darn knackered after that, to be quite honest. Looking forward to having a recovery day tomorrow. Put my feet up and uh, yeah, maybe just watch a movie or something. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, sorry it wasn't the uh, the original planned route, but uh, well, I think it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It certainly was was fun to make and to record. And um, sound off if you enjoyed this, and we might do something similar again. But I'm going to go and uh, go and have a shower, so I will see you guys later on. Bye.